Hello, beloveds, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery, a podcast for those who are survivors of childhood trauma, emotional neglect, and narcissistic abuse. This podcast is hosted by Rachel Leroy, a college professor and trauma survivor. Many of us spend years trying to heal and don't get anywhere. We don't always target the trauma itself, which is so often what keeps us stuck. This podcast is where faith meets science. Rachel is an emotional healing expert with 20 years of experience applying healing modalities that helped her start making progress after nothing else worked. She'll show you how to do the same. Each week, we'll cover a topic that will show you how to heal trauma for good. Please check out our website and show notes at christianemotionalrecovery.com and join the Facebook community, Trauma Survivors Unite Christian Emotional Recovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Christian Emotional Recovery. I'm your host, Rachel Leroy, and this is Season 3, Episode 7 of the podcast. We're moving right along. Thank you so much for listening. This episode will be The Power of Gratitude in Emotional Recovery. So this is Season 3, Episode 7, The Power of Gratitude in Emotional Recovery. As always, if you haven't, check out the YouTube channel, which has different content than is on the podcast podcast. So go there and click the subscribe bell and get notified anytime a new video comes out. I have new videos coming out now. I don't have them coming out all of the year due to limitations on my time, but I do try to put them out a good part of the year. Um, Also, if you haven't, check out the Facebook group, Christian Emotional Recovery, Trauma Survivors Unite. The, uh, The YouTube channel is also called Christian Emotional Recovery, so check those out. And I could really use help with the podcast, and so that helps me to keep going. Sometimes I do face challenges, and so... Um, I've got two links below where you can help support the podcast. Um, The preferred way is you can support monthly so that it's more sustainable. It helps me to pay for the expenses of the podcast as well and helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. And that is below in the show notes. And that's Patreon, which is a reputable site where creators um, get support from their followers to help them to do what they do. And there's another one called Ko-Fi. Ko-Fi, and that's where you can make a one-time donation. They're both reputable sites, and I have the links below. Thank you so much. And you can also check out the website, ChristianEmotionalRecovery.com, for more bonuses for the podcast and for other things. Also, check out my store, which is at RachelLeRoy.podia. That's P-O-D-I-A dot com, and I'll also put that in the show notes. So let's go ahead and jump right into the power of gratitude in emotional recovery. And um, I do have a course on... um, Gratitude, if you're interested. At the end of this, I'll talk just a little bit about that. It's a course I created years ago. I didn't create it for this platform. It is not a Christian course per se, but I kept it neutral because I was looking to create it for a general audience. So I think it would be okay for Christians to use it. And it can help you to cultivate gratitude in a more realistic way. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Gratitude in terms of emotional recovery, especially dealing with trauma. I don't like everything on the podcast to be about trauma, but a lot of it really is focused on that because that's where people um, get stuck and that's where I want to help people to be able to get past the stuckness that they've had for, in some cases, decades. And so that's what this podcast is all about. So it's not because we're in fight or flight mode so much of the time. You can't just switch switch a a switch on and suddenly just be grateful. It has to be something that's authentic. It has to be something that's real. And so for trauma survivors, it's especially difficult to be grateful. And also this podcast, even though God does command us to be grateful, isn't so much about being grateful for the sake of being grateful, but how we can harness gratitude to help us. And I think that's why God wants us to be grateful. Is It's for us. It's to help us to live a better life, to reap the benefits of gratitude, to have a better relationship with Him. And so I think, you know, if you're going through something, should we be grateful for that? 
I don't know. You know, if, if it's something traumatic, I'm not necessarily grateful for the experience, but we can be grateful, and I've talked about this in previous podcasts, we can be grateful about what can come out of it since we um, can't change what's happened. Does that make sense? So in that way, we're not bypassing and invalidating our experience or using toxic positivity to try to cover it up. That's not helpful. That's not healthy. Um, but we can see how we can reap certain benefits from experiences that we can't change and learn from those. So no matter how difficult things are, there are small mercies for which we can be grateful in a situation. And there are sometimes big mercies as well that are gifts from God. And also, like I said, the things that come out of the experience are things that we can be grateful for. Um, I have a couple of articles. This podcast is not quite as article heavy, but I did want to read a little bit about the nature of gratitude in the context of trauma and emotional recovery. I'm using a little bit of a broader umbrella here. And there is one article that is from the CPTSD Foundation. It's from the CPTSD Foundation, and it's called Complex Trauma, False Gratitude, and Letting Go, and it's by Shirley Davis. I've noticed most of the CPTSD Foundation articles are by her. Complex Trauma, False Gratitude, and Letting Go, and as always, I will put the articles in the show notes that I'm using, and reading them will help give you a little more context, learn a little more, and find exercises you can do. At the end of this podcast, we will go over some exercises. So um, before I get into that, though, let me tell you a little bit about um, how this podcast will go. Um, First, like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about the nature of trauma survivors in gratitude, how that works, how that doesn't work. And I I covered it a little bit. We'll talk about it a little more. And we'll talk a little bit about different kinds of gratitude and also, um, you know, how gratitude can be sort of a an antiseptic against certain impacts of trauma, so to speak, like almost like a um, something that you're warding off an illness or something. And then, so it's almost protection, not an inoculation per se, but it helps you to recover faster. And then self-compassion is also a modified form of gratitude that you can use when you're not able maybe to be directly grateful. Self-compassion and just connecting to God and being grateful that God is there. And then how gratitude applied with a trauma-informed approach can be healing. We'll talk about the science behind gratitude briefly. And there's a couple of articles I'll cover a little bit of to help give a little bit about the science. Because if you see the science behind it, how it affects the brain and all that, it gives it a lot more power. And then also um, a little bit about how you can practice gratitude with concrete practices and um, apply it to your life in a sustainable way, okay? So let's look at the CPTSD article and the three kinds of gratitude. Now, the three are three kinds of gratitude are not like overall kinds of gratitude. This is the article's interpretation, but I think it can give you some context in terms of how gratitude when applied in an unhealthy way is not good and then also give you some context for how to apply it in a realistic way if you're experiencing trauma. So it talks about something called reverse gratitude and it says this type of gratitude occurs when we feel thankful. There are many, it, sorry, this type occurs when we think about things that did not happen or did not own and feel thankful. There are many things to be reverse grateful for. However, this line of thinking can lead to judgmental thinking about yourself and others. When we were children living in our dysfunctional homes too often, we were subjected to reverse gratitude, such as being told we should be grateful for our families of origin when indeed we were not. Um, In other words, some people had a very difficult family life and it's very difficult to be thankful for that. And that's challenging, you know, because it's, it's a complicated thing. False gratitude, it says, still the CPTSD foundation. This type of gratitude is insincere and not authentic. False gratitude. False gratitude can happen in response to feeling that someone is expecting us to express it towards them. Gratitude, when demanded, is not genuine and indeed is harmful. Feeling the need to be grateful is a way to lose genuine gratitude. Perhaps as a child you were coerced into telling someone that you were grateful for them when all you truly felt was anger and resentment. Now, it's good to have a good attitude. This is me. But you can't force these things either. 
the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, but it does have to come from the heart. And that's why we work through these issues also for ourselves, of course. Uh, also, it says false gratitude can lead to a myriad of mixed up feelings and thoughts and in adulthood can keep one away from healthy relationships. We've looked at two negative forms of gratitude. Now let us examine true gratitude. True gratitude comes from the awareness of the good things in our lives and the new experiences we have as adults. This is a form of thankfulness that comes from the heart and allows for the right amount of gratefulness to keep us mentally healthy. No one can force you to have true gratitude, just as no one can force you to choose to be miserable. Growth comes from the genuine gratitude and we have many things in our now lives to be happy about. All of us have experienced the three types of gratitude at, our, at some point in our lives. However, complex trauma has colored our ability to experience gratitude in the correct manner and proportions. And so it just talks about those three kinds of gratitude. Like I said, that's not necessarily a general thing. It's more like an interpretation of the article's writer, but it does make a valid point because one thing I wanted to talk about was you can't force gratitude. And actually it can be harmful to try to force gratitude in situations where people are suffering or they have trauma or they are struggling. And um, it's not like we can't choose to find something to be grateful for, but that's different than forced gratitude all around. Does that make sense? And so um, it's a matter of the context of it and how it's practiced as to whether gratitude can be healthy or toxic when it comes to PTSD, CPTSD, and emotional recovery, okay, going through the struggles of that. There's an article from Greater Good Magazine, and this is um, Berkeley, and it's called, Can Giving Thanks Help Us Heal From Trauma? Can Giving Thanks Help Us Heal From Trauma? Now, I did look for some Christian articles, and I found one. And there was one on Christianity Today I was going to use, and it looked really good. But before I could read it, it put it behind a paywall. Yay, go figure, right? Everything you have to pay for now, and I don't have the money to do that. So um, I'm, I found another one that was on a therapist's website, a Christian therapist. And I'll read that one a little bit to give a little bit of a Christian perspective in a little bit. But... Um, Can Giving Thanks Help Us Heal From Trauma is the Berkeley article, and it talks about, you know, very traumatic situations like natural disasters and um, violence in the Middle East and stuff like that. And that's something that some of us have experienced, but a lot of us, we don't experience that on a daily basis. But the article does show how a grateful attitude can help people recover from these situations more quickly. So I just wanted to put out a disclaimer and say that this is, you know, um, I know a lot of us haven't been through experiences like this, but the impact of these experiences are not so radically different. So it's not to invalidate the tremendous impact of these kinds of experiences that people in war-torn countries experience, people that are oppressed, genuinely oppressed in other parts of the world experience but um, I just wanted to put that out there, that your trauma is still legitimate regardless, and that there's no comparison. You don't need to compare, okay? But I just wanted to read a couple of paragraphs at the end of the article, um, and it talks about how gratitude can be sort of a, like a, a treatment to help you recover faster from these kinds of situations, whatever kind of traumatic situation it may be. And it says, despite these limitations, it's talking about those situations where things are really, you know, people are in danger and stuff. Um, despite these limitations, however, the study did provide, provide some nuanced insights into the relationship between gratitude and resilience. It did a study, there was a study of people that survived these kinds of situations and how gratitude could impact their recovery from that, those disasters kind of like what's happening in um, Ukraine. But it says, particularly when considered in light of the Israeli study, both found that gratitude seemed to help repair the psychological damage inflicted by disaster. This is the part that stood out to me. But there is a key difference between the two studies. Rather than acting as a vaccine that inoculates individuals against psychological damage, as the Israeli study suggests, gratitude may be more of an antiseptic. In other words, Right, the Indonesian researchers, that was part of the studies done, the role of gratitude may be more of fostering post-traumatic positive growth rather than to shield people from psychological distress in immediate aftermath of disasters. Why? Both studies suggest that the answer may lie in gratitude's ability to make us 
take a second look at our lives, turning our attention from the bad things to the good, a cognitive process that needs time to unfold. This implies that giving thanks on the fourth Thursday of November, that's Thanksgiving in the U.S., won't just help us appreciate food and family. It could also help us heal from the traumas of our lives, both small and large. I would argue, though, that, of course, you giving thanks is something you can do every day. And that's why I'm going to talk about some concrete practices of gratitude that can help you to heal. Even if it's little by little, day by day, it's part of the daily practices that we talk about that if you do consistently over time, you chip away at that trauma and you start to see results. You start to see the changes. And so a little bit about um, an alternative to um, gratitude. If you're in a place where you just cannot experience gratitude, don't condemn yourself. Don't kick yourself. Don't beat on yourself. Self-compassion is actually a better alternative than doing that if you're not able to find gratitude. So in a way, self-compassion can be a modified form of gratitude. And there's an article in Psychology Today. It talks about that a little bit. And I will read just a little bit of it. Just keep in mind that self-compassion is a big part of this whole equation of healing trauma, of healing CPTSD. And it's a substitute for direct gratitude if you're not able to experience that, create that, or find that. If you have to force it, then just stick with self-compassion for now and you can eventually move into gratitude when the time is more um, conducive for that. Does that make sense? Let it flow. Don't force it. Okay? Let it flow. And so um, this Psychology Today article was called The Neuroscience of Gratitude and Trauma. And the subtitle is Attempts to be Positive Do Not Expand Our Capacity to Endure Pain. So that's talking about bypassing toxic positivity. I don't like some of the wording in this article, but that's just my opinion. The capacity to endure pain is part of life. But I wanted to focus more on like direct gratitude and allowing it to help you heal and to feel better. And um, this article is by Odalia, Od Odalia Gertel Kraybill. And um, I'll put it in the show notes just like the other ones. But I was going to talk a little bit about self-compassion and how that can help you, like I said, as a substitute. So there's a section at the end of the article called Simplified Self-Compassion, and it gives you a little bit of context here as well. And it says, the way to expand the capacity to endure pain begins with being open to not being open. That sounds strange, but it's true. Try not to change how you feel, think, or sense things. It's just saying don't force it. I think if you can choose to be grateful and it's genuine, you can pivot to that, then do it. But don't force it. If it's not working, that's okay. You'll get it. It Just, just have some self-compassion and work on the healing. And then the gratitude will come as you begin to cultivate it gently and kindly with yourself. But begin by observing what you expe are experiencing when you're experiencing difficult emotions or trauma. Whatever stuckness, whatever fearfulness, whatever anxiety or withdrawal it says without evaluation without judgment symbolically consider this as a research project without trying to change anything gather data on your senses reactions and responses and then it talks about simplified self-compassion as a general rule remind yourself that you are always doing the best that you can at any given moment given a choice you may have responded differently to events at the time of trauma but you couldn't survival mechanisms took over and helped you do whatever it took to stay alive so to speak when you are able to try and change how you feel, expand, it says, your response to what you are feeling. When you criticize yourself, you contract. When it is difficult and painful, say, it's okay to feel pain. It's okay to feel X, Y, Z. I don't have to feel, I don't like to feel X, Y, Z, but it's okay to feel it. Saying this helps your nervous system calm down. It's validation. Sometimes validation you never got. The more you do it, the more your ability to relax by choice expands. And then it says ETI simplified self-compassion exercise. And it's think of a situation in your life that is distressing. Ask yourself, what do I feel right now? Awareness, recognizing the feeling. Rating on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you feel this feeling? 1, 
little, 10, a lot. Say to yourself, X, Y, Z is a part of life. Everybody feels this sometimes. And know that you're not alone. That's the common humanity that connects you with other people. So you're not feeling so alone because trauma can make you feel that way. Just remember that everybody goes through that. Not to invalidate your experience, but to connect yourself with common experiences of other people. And then it says, it is okay. I am okay. I am, and then your name, I am here. I am now, right now, I am safe. It is okay. I am okay. I am Rachel, for example. I am here. I am now, right now, I am safe. And then check in again with the scale to describe how much you feel. I would repeat that a few times and then go from there. But um, it says this is a good way to experiment with self-compassion and expand your capacity. It says to endure pain. Like I said, I, I don't necessarily like the way that's phrased. But it gives you a place where you're just unconditional with yourself. And you're showing unconditional compassion to yourself. And then if gratitude comes, great. If not, it'll come at another time. But it gives you an increased ability, it says, to live with pain and will result in increased experience of joy. The process of trauma in integration should target all aspects of wellness emotional cognitive physical spiritual and social over time you will gradually feel less vulnerable to extremes of highs and lows and experience an overall sense of sustainability okay so that's this positive psychology um article and it's actually an exercise um i'm jumping ahead a little bit and doing an exercise but that gives you um, some ideas of how to practice self-compassion when you're not able to experience gratitude. And um, that's a trauma-informed approach. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the science behind gratitude. There are endless studies that show the physical, mental, emotional benefits of it. That's a little bit about how to use gratitude authentically um, in terms of where you're at if you're experiencing trauma. And um, when you practice gratitude authentically without bypassing, without toxic positivity, without forcing, then it has that power. It can release that power of all those benefits. And concrete practices of gratitude, if you're not sure how to start, is a good way to get there. And so um, general concrete practices of gratitude... Um, I do, like I said, have a course, and that can help you to get started if you're not sure where to start. And some of it's very, like, specific. So I, my, um, I'll go over just, like, some of the sections, not the whole thing, but just the titles of those so you can see some of those um, specific types of practices. But there's also free articles here. And there's endless free articles all over the place on how you can practice gratitude. Work with yourself where you're at. And just keep that in mind. And don't force it. Be kind to yourself. Show yourself self-compassion. But general concrete practices of gratitude. There was an article in the Seattle Christian Counseling website. And I wanted to give a Christian perspective on it. And so this gives you a little bit about how do you apply this to your faith? And how do you apply faith to this, of course? Because that's we want practical faith. We want applicable faith, right? So um, our relationship with God is about our relationship with God, but it's also about applying it to our lives. It's called Engaging with God in the Midst of Trauma Recovery. And it's by Dr. Maria Reyes, Engaging with God in the Midst of Trauma Recovery. And it talks about how you can use um, your faith to help you recover from trauma and how you can engage with God, of course, when you're trying to recover from trauma as well. And it talks about spiritual practices for, um, for trauma recovery. And one of them, ironically, is prayer and lament. And that's something that we have lost touch with in our American culture because there's so much... I mean, there's positivity, and that's great, but when it's toxic and when it's bypassing, it's not healthy. And sometimes people forget that it's okay to lament. And let, there's a whole um, book in the Bible focused just on that, lamentations. And there are many, many uh, psalms that are just, God, where are you? Um, my, um, I'm filling my couch with tears. There's just all of these places where you lament. So you can't bypass that experience if that is part of the full spectrum of human emotion and experience. And that's one of the, I won't read all of it here, but it's one of the practices that's included in this um, article, the Reyes article, Seattle Christian Counseling. I think she's a therapist. And then another one she talks about is movement. Movement can be healing. That's exercise, 
Quiet walks, she says, some people choose to have intentional quiet walks with God in a safe place. They may pray or um, walk quietly and listen to God. I find God in nature, so that can be healing. Mindfulness is another one. It says engaging with God through mindfulness is often suggested to people recovering from trauma. This may be a practice that is initially best to explore alongside a counselor or a trained Christian mindfulness practitioner. However, it can sometimes stir up, quote, emotions and can best be to explore explore with someone else first. In mindfulness, we focus on the present, and there are many ways to practice mindfulness, and it can be just as good to focus on Christ and what is going on in our present moment. And then another one is journaling. That one's long, so I won't read all of that, but it gives you practices you can do to help you to in a natural and organic way that's not forced to cultivate gratitude in gentle ways with yourself when you're trauma recovery, when you're going through emotional and trauma recovery. And then it talks about scripture for processing trauma. And she lists several scriptures here that I had mentioned. The book of Lamentations, Psalms 12, 13, 25, 40, 44, 88, and 94. I found that it can be very healing just to read those and not like dwell on them and go in circles, but like to read those and just let yourself feel what you're feeling. And you can sort of understand what David or the psalmist was going through when they wrote this. And then there are some scriptures she included here as well that you can, she says, hide in your heart during trauma recovery um, during your journey. And one of them is, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, Psalms 46, 1. And these are scriptures that are comforting, but they also give you something to hold on to, give you something to be grateful for. And there is gratitude in them, even in difficulty, without it being forced, right? And it's another one is, Behold, I am, an, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, Isaiah 43, 19. Another one on this site, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I'll say it again. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And that's also in the Beatitudes, um, those who mourn, um, something kind of like that. And that's Matthew 5, 4. Um, As I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. So God's truths are a way to help us to find comfort in these difficult situations and be where we're at in an honest way. And yes, you can still have gratitude and lament at the same time if it's authentic, if it flows, but you can't force it. And I, what I love about a lot of these scriptures is that they don't force it. They acknowledge emotions. They don't deny them. They don't push them away. The Bible's all about gratitude and rejoicing and joy and positivity, but not in a forced way. It embraces the full spectrum of emotions of human existence. And trauma is part of that for a lot of people, and that's okay. It's about healing the trauma. It's about getting past the trauma. But it's not about forcing when you do. It's about allowing it to be, allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling. And passing, doing that in a healthy way allows you to move the trauma out of your body and move into other spectrums of emotion and experience. And then the last one is Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. So those are some great ones to give you comfort. And this was the Seattle Christian Counseling article by Dr. Maria D. Reyes. Now, um, there are other practices. There's one in Life Solutions. I'm not going to read all of those. I'm just going to read a list of different practices you can do, and you can go to that article and see what jives with you, what connects, what resonates. I don't think there's any issues here in terms of being able to practice these as Christians. The Bible talks about thankfulness and gratitude. Acknowledge Christ. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge the source of all good things as you do this, and you're, you're acknowledging God. So it's, in my opinion, scriptural to do these things. Keep the scriptures, of of course, in mind as you do them. But um, so this is the Life Solutions article. And it's called, it's very long. And it's basically a lot of different things that you can do in terms of gratitude. It's called the power of gratitude. And then it says, thank you. Gratitude, powerful tool for healing trauma and PTSD. I don't see an art, an author, but it's Life Solutions Counseling. And it's somewhere in, I don't know, another part of the world. But um, first it talks about why gratitude is 
um, helpful. It talks about how it increases mental health. So it's basing it on all those studies. I'm not going to go into all those, but there's endless studies that show this. It's um, pretty much proven that gratitude helps your mental health, physical health, personality, emotional health, spices up your social life, makes um, your career better, and so forth and so on. And it gives you a list of all these benefits. And a lot of them are, it just lists study after study. So if you want to see some of the benefits of gratitude in more detail, which I'm not going to go over here, check out the Life Solutions article. And there's also another one I'm going to include, but I didn't use it for this. And it's Positive Psychology. And it's the neuroscience of gratitude and effects on the brain. So it's not directly related to trauma healing, but I think it's helpful to read over the benefits of gratitude to see the science behind it because it's established. It's not if, it's it's there, it's established. And this is a long article, but it helps you to understand the science behind the positives and the benefits of gratitude. So in the Life Solutions article, it also talks about strategies you can do, easy tips to become more grateful. There's a gratitude journal exercise, and it gives you a list of a bunch of different ones you can do. There's a gratitude meditation. This one is um, does talk about Buddhist and Native American elders, and like I've said before, um, I do believe that we can learn from other traditions. It's just a matter of staying focused on Christ and not getting carried away with that. But there's definitely wisdom that you can learn from a lot of this. And so the gratitude meditation does mention some of those other traditions. You can take that or leave it. You don't have to do any of that, of course. Use your discretion. Pray. Use your discernment. Ask God. Um, simply say thank you is another one. And that's all the different people in your life you can say thank you to. Even if somebody you have a difficult relationship with, if it's not like they're horrible and they're heinous, then, you know, there might be things like your parents, if you have a complicated relationship with them, you know, or your kids, if there are things they have done for you or things they've brought into your life that are good, and you can be genuine about that, that's good. You can say that to them as long as you're not no contact because they're so toxic. That's not the same thing. But those people where it's a little more complicated and, you, you know, you can enhance your relationship with those people and improve your mental health by telling them thank you for the things that you can be genuinely thankful for. Maybe your parents weren't there for you emotionally, but they took care of you uh, physically. I mean, you, you, you don't force that. But if it's something you can thank them for, then do it. If there's something on your heart that you're grateful for to anybody, alive or dead, to God, to yourself, to all that is, say it. Don't hold back. Say it. You almost never regret it. Another thing you can do is pay it forward and pass the kindness along to someone else especially to people that need it, to people that really need it. And that's where God loves a cheerful giver comes in in a genuine way, right? So, you know, as Christians, we're called to be grateful. We're called to minister to people. We're called to help people and do that in ways that are authentic to us, but in ways that God has called us to do, God has called us to do. So that's a little bit about gratitude and how you can, you know, Practice gratitude in a realistic way, but not in a forced way. No toxic positivity, no bypassing, no covering up, no sweeping under the rug, no denial, no disassociation. Just, you know, like, oh, I don't have any problems. I feel great. And underneath, you know that there's cognitive dissonance. And cognitive dissonance is where you're acting or saying one thing on the surface, and then underneath, there's all this opposite stuff going on. Or you're holding two opposed beliefs and they just don't work. Sometimes they do, but in a lot of cases they don't. And so really listen in to your body and your mind and check in with yourself a couple of times a day to see what's really going on. Because if there's cognitive dissonance, kindly and gently acknowledging that and kind of processing that in a very gentle way will help you to be able to move past that block and into the next stage of your life. Does that make sense? So you know, when it comes to gratitude, I don't want you to think that it's something that you have to force yourself to do. I think it's something that God wants us to do. But as trauma survivors, we're in a unique situation to be able to practice gratitude and to know how to do that in a way that is helpful. I think everybody, to an extent, this is true for, but especially complex trauma survivors and PTSD survivors also. So be gentle with yourself. Be kind to yourself. 
You can't just force yourself to be grateful, but it is about practicing and cultivating gratitude where you can. Go through the process of healing your emotions first. Have self-compassion. Find alternatives to gratitude that can push you in the right direction, but don't do it just for moving forward. Do it for yourself. Do it for healing. Do it for finding peace. And um, like I said, there's endless studies that show that gratitude has physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual benefits. And they're just endless. There's study after study. And you can do gratitude authentically by finding practices that work for you. Now, I have a course, and it's in Podia. It's um, Rachel Leroy dot podia dot com and if not that try rachel leroy dot com rachel leroy dot com but um i have a course and i the gratitude course is 47 dollars but i will put a coupon so that you can get it at a lot less because you're my um podcast um, followers and i greatly appreciate that so i'll tell you what i'll put it in there for half price 27 dollars for the whole course and this course is like two or three hours long i'm not even sure exactly how long it is but it's it's you know pretty involved but the course is called ignite your abundance through the power of gratitude and I created this years ago because I was struggling with this myself. And if I want to learn something, I, I, I teach it. And I know that sounds strange, but that's one reason I started the podcast. It benefits me too. But I do it for you. But it does help me give me purpose and um, hope. And I hope it does the same for you. But this course, I'm hoping that it can do the same as well. There's um, five sections and one of them is called The Gift of Gratitude, Stop Striving and Start Thriving Introduction. And I have an intro, scientific proof that gratitude works, studies that show gratitude works, experiential proof that gratitude works. And then I have little exercises at the end of each section called Quick Wins, an experiment in cultivating gratitude. Section two is on the nature of gratitude and how it can work for you. And I go over that in detail and cover different facets of that. There's an exercise there, how a sacrifice of gratitude and hardship can transform the situation. Again, it's about a choice, not forcing. If you can't do it, that's okay. Come back to it when you can. Section three is about cultivating gratitude as a daily practice. And I talk about that a little more. And then I include four specific practices, journaling, um, storyboards and idea maps, gratitude devotionals and reading books, affirmations, meditations, and sacred texts, or scripture in this case. Like I said, I kept it for a general audience. Creative gratitude, tiny mercies, and making limited opportunities and durable. That's a quote from a Thomas Hardy novel. And then just a little bit more, section four, the transformative power of gratitude in your life, the power of persistence, and so forth and so on. Paying forward blessings received from transformation is quick win four in section four. And then I have the closing that brings everything together. So if you're interested in the course, I will create a coupon and put it in the show notes where you can find it. And I'll put it with the regular resources, with the articles, with the article resources. Okay, so that's a little bit on gratitude. And I've gone over, you know, how to how to practice gratitude in times of difficulty, how not to force it, what you can do instead, how that connects with your relationship with God and with your emotional healing processes and trauma recovery, and then some resources that can help you find those concrete practices as well as a course that I created years ago. So I hope that's been helpful. And, you know, there's free resources if you can't do the paid course, but the paid course is one option. And I will give it to you half price because you know, you're my audience and I love you. And I just, I'm so thankful for you. And I'm so thankful for this whole experience. It just gives me hope. It gives me, I'm so grateful for all of it, which, you know, is all, it's all about gratitude, right? So um, thank you so much for listening. Check out the show notes for all the resources I mentioned. Check out the extra resources that go with the podcast, including the YouTube video. Click the subscribe bell and check out the Facebook page and check out the website and rachelleroy.com podia.com for the store where I have some meditations as well. And the gratitude course is on the Podia site in the Christian Emotional Recovery store as well. So check that out. Thank you so much for listening. Know that even if you don't feel grateful now, there will be times in your life where you will be able to let that gratitude flow naturally, where you'll be able to practice it more gradually. The more you peel those layers of trauma off, the more you'll start to experience a capacity to 
experience and have and create and cultivate genuine gratitude. Keep in mind that gratitude is a cultivated practice, just like healing is, okay? And that will help you to know that you may take three steps forward and two steps back, but you're moving forward overall, right? You're moving forward overall, and praise God for that. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you, and have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Christian Emotional Recovery, hosted by Rachel Leroy. For links to this week's resources and to join the discussion, check out this episode's show notes at christianemotionalrecovery.com, where you can also find links to our YouTube channel and Facebook group. Join our email list and get other episodes and resources. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate and review the podcast and tell a friend who may benefit from this message. See you next time. And remember, beloveds, God loves you, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made.